The Queens Boulevard line, or QBL for short, is one of the most complex lines in New York City's subway system. Designed by the IND, it was envisioned as this grand trunk line, with multiple branches that would go deeper into Queens. But because of World War II and Robert Moses, that never really happened, and QBL was stuck with the same general service pattern since 1955. A Broadway local service, a Crosstown local service, a 6th Avenue express service, and an 8th Avenue express service, with both express services running via the 53rd Street Tunnel. However, in 2001, that changed. The long-anticipated 63rd Street connector opened, which further complicated things. The 6th Avenue Express Service, or the F, would be rerouted to 63rd Street. A new service, the V, would supplement lost 6th Avenue service at 53rd Street. However, the catch was that the V is local, meaning a nasty new merge at Queens Plaza was created. To prevent more merging and delays, the G was cut off from QBL during rush hours. But because of budget cuts in 2010, the G was fully eliminated from QBL and the V was merged to form the orange M. All of these complex service patterns create a ton of merging conflicts, but these complex service patterns create a decent amount of connections. This is why deinterlining QBL is a complicated case study. Now, before I dive deeper into deinterlining QBL, let's take a look at how QBL works. I will be dividing QBL into three zones, as because of its complexity, ridership patterns vary on the line. The western zone of QBL consists of stations from Court Square or 21st Street Queensbridge to 65th Street. Many local station riders often stay under local trains, because there are no stations to skip after Queens Plaza. The only people that transfer here are people who want 8th Avenue services, but generally speaking, there is a low degree of transferring going on here. Riders in this zone are heading to Midtown West, Midtown East, and the Financial District with a preference for 53rd Street services. This is to be expected, as this section is the closest to Manhattan. This zone has the lowest ridership of the three zones, at about 27 million riders annually. That consists of about 23% of the entire ridership of QBL. The middle zone of QBL consists of stations from Roosevelt Avenue to 67th Avenue. Here, many of the local station users transfer at Roosevelt Avenue to express trains. So, there is a high degree of transferring in this section, meaning most riders are operating under a two-seat ride, not a one-seat ride. Riders in this zone are heading to Midtown West, Midtown East, and the Financial District, with a preference for 53rd Street services. But unlike the Western Zone, more people work in Flushing, Queensetter Mall, and Long Island. But since QBL doesn't serve them, we will leave them out. This zone is in the middle of the three zones, at about 40 million riders annually consisting about 35% of the entire ridership of QBL. But it is the densest of the three zones, as an average station here sees 6.7 million riders annually. To show you the density of the section, these six stations see more riders than the entirety of the White Plains road line in the Bronx. This shows how much Queens has grown over the last 20 years. Finally, the Eastern Zone consists of stations from Forest Hills to either Jamaica 179th Street or Jamaica Center. There is some transfer going on, especially at Union Turnpike and Forest Hills, either to an E or F train. But generally speaking, most riders here would get on and stay on their train, meaning there is a low degree of transferring here. Riders in this zone are still going to the usual places, Midtown West, Midtown East, and the Financial District, plus the preference for 53rd Street. But the prevalence of Queens and Long Island destinations is much stronger here. For example, JFK Airport, Queen Center Mall, North Shore University Hospital, plus the Commercial Center in Jamaica are all places where commuters are going. Even though these destinations are not served by QBL, it really goes to show how overdue a Queen's transit revolution is. This zone sees the highest ridership of the three zones, at about 49 million riders annually, or about 42% of the entire ridership of QBL. But unlike the western and middle sections, more of the ridership comes from bus feeder routes. This means that these stations are taking riders outside of its usual catchment area. Now that we talked about how QBL works, let's talk about where Queens as a whole is going. Since QBL is a feeder line, many riders often use local bus routes covering a large portion of Queens or the 7 train to get onto QBL. 
Again, the top three destinations are Midtown West, Midtown East, and the Financial District, with a preference for 53rd Street services. But there are many destinations within Queens that riders want to go to, like JFK Airport, Queens Center Mall, and North Shore University Hospital. I am going to leave them out, as QBL doesn't serve them, but again, it shows you that a transit revolution is needed in Queens. Now, I will be going over the four most popular plans to de-interline QBL, with partial and complete de-interlines, and seeing how they stack up to serving QBL ridership targets. Starting with the most popular de-interlining project, the F&M swap. This partial de-interline eliminates the merges at Queens Plaza, one of the worst in the entire system. But by doing so, it sends all M trains to the 63rd Street Tunnel, and all F trains to the 53rd Street Tunnel. So, how will QBL work with the F&M swap in place? As for QBL West, they will probably be the most affected. If riders are going to their destination along the 53rd Street Tunnel, that means a transfer to the E or F train is needed, instead of a 1C ride with the current M train. But they are not the majority, as 53rd Street is only two stations. Midtown West is much larger than that, which means the rest of the riders will be unaffected, as they still have a one-seat ride via 6th Avenue or Broadway. Midtown East is still accessible via the R train, for a transfer at Lexington Avenue, 59th Street. Finally, the Financial District is still accessible, either a transfer at Lexington 59th Street or the R train, though most riders would transfer to a Lexington Express service. As for the middle zone of QBL, they won't be as affected. Riders already transfer at Roosevelt Avenue in huge numbers anyway to the Express, which means the one-seat ride to 53rd Street isn't an issue. Given that QBL serves more people here, that moves the needle further to the positive side. And finally, for QBL East, they will be greatly benefited. They will still get their one-seat ride on 6th and 8th Avenue, and since most of the riders like 53rd Street services, they will now get it because of the F train going via the 53rd Street Tunnel. This will negate the need for some transferring at Forest Hills and Kew Gardens, thus decreasing crowds at those stations. Since QBL East has the biggest ridership base, that firmly moves the needle in favor of the F&M swap. Therefore, the F&M swap is justified. But since this is the interlining we are talking about, there are going to be objections. Therefore, I think it is fair to talk about some. Possibly the biggest one that I get on a regular basis is, would the 53rd Street Tunnel be overcrowded because of the F train? I answer, no. There are two types of overcrowding, the one on trains and the one on stations. Let's start with train crowding. Prior to 2001, when the F train was on 53rd Street, the E and F ran at a combined 30 trains per hour. However, when the swap occurred, despite the MTA scheduling 30 trains per hour, that figure decreased to 27 trains per hour, thanks to the new merging conflict at Queens Plaza. But reroute the F back to 53rd Street, and the merging conflict is gone, meaning we are back at 30 trains per hour. And with CBTC, the capacity output can be as high as 36 trains per hour, though I think 32 or 33 trains per hour is more realistic. This means that train crowding will decrease thanks to the increase in service that can be scheduled thanks to the F&M swap. Meanwhile, station crowding will decrease if the swap was to occur. This is because the E and M train loads are highly imbalanced, with the E train being packed and the M trains being empty. This is because many commuters perceive the express as faster and would crowd onto the next express train, rather than the next train in general. But with the F train and express in Queens being rerouted on the 53rd Street Tunnel, this means that there are two express trains that will serve the 53rd Street Tunnel. This means that riders are more likely going to take the first train that shows up rather than wait for the next E-train. This will help clear crowds at stations along 53rd Street, thus reducing station crowding. The next concern is 63rd Street tunnel wait times. After all, the M is not that frequent, which means the trip time will increase. Except, there are more factors to that. The M train runs at 10 trains per hour, maximum. The F train runs at 13 trains per hour. The difference in wait times is about 83 seconds. Now. The F train is notorious for high variations in wait times, meaning the next train could be in 3 minutes, then 18 minutes, then 21 minutes. This is because the F train has a ton of virgin conflicts, like at Queens Plaza. But by giving the M train, which under this scenario will not be held up at Queens Plaza or 75th Avenue, this means trains will be less variable. This consistency means that the high variation in F trains will be gone 
meaning riders might make back that 83 second deficit and potentially save time. Although this is marginal, it still means that the F&M swap will still benefit riders living along 63rd Street by making trains more reliable. Another concern is what about late night and weekends? The M train doesn't run to Queens at those hours. Well, the F train will serve late nights and weekends. Consistency does not matter because there are dozens of stations where the advertised service does not run during late nights. For example, 81st Street is served by the B and C trains during the day and A trains at night. City Hall is served by the R and W trains during the day and N trains during the night. Even local stations on QBL, the M and R trains serve them during the day and E trains serve them at night. So adding another four stations, or less than 1% of the system, that has this alternate routine will not be the end of the world. For weekends, I am open to the F train going on 63rd. But the ultimate solution is to have M trains serve QBL during weekends to help out the R. The R during the weekends is a dumpster fire, and adding the M will significantly improve service on the whole of QBL. The final concern regarding the 63rd Street Tunnel is, can the M train serve it, given its low capacity? Well, let's take a look at the capacity of the M train. Each car can hold 300 people, and with 8 car trains, it is 2400 people per train. 10 trains per hour will therefore net 24,000 people per hour. According to MTA ridership statistics, 149,000 people daily pass through the 63rd Street Tunnel. Peak ridership during rush hour is about 11% of daily ridership, at around 16,390 people. With a capacity of 24,000 people per hour, this means the trains will be far from overcrowded. In conclusion, all of these factors lead me to give this de-enter line a 98 out of 100. After all, it will decrease crowding on 53rd Street and QBL, increase capacity, and the one-seat ride options won't be changed much. This makes it by far the best de-interlining project the MTA can do. Speaking of which, as you may know, the F train is rerouted via the 53rd Street Tunnel because of the 63rd Street Reconstruction Project. But in a few months, the project will be completed, meaning the MTA will make a decision on whether to make the F via 53rd Street permanent. This means that the MTA will likely take feedback from riders and politicians. Since this is by far the best deinterlining project we can do, we will advocate for this change to be permanent. But we can't do it without you and we'll like your help. If you're interested in this, there is an ongoing petition to make this change permanent. Please sign it, as every signature counts, and share it with other people. Also, consider writing to your representative, as they also need to know. That is all, and we are excited to launch this initiative. Now, back to the video. The second deinterline is a little more complicated. It would keep the F and M swap, but it will swap the N and R trains in Queens. Instead of serving QBL, the R will be rerouted to Astoria. The N train, on the other hand, will continue to run with the Q after Herald Square until Lexington and 63rd, where it will merge with the M train. Now, the R train won't have a yard, and my personal preference is the Astoria yard or upgrading 36 to 38th Street. But by deinterlining the call with the Van Ude plan, the R will have a yard at Coney Island, so that works. To sum up, this second deinterline also gets rid of the Queens Plaza merge, deinterlines the Kolb, and eliminates the Herald Square merge. Basically, the Herald Square merge is interesting, as it is a pure reverse branching merge. But by moving to Lexington and 63rd, that issue is mitigated, as it is now a reverse branch and combined system. It isn't perfect, but is way better than Herald Square. The appeal of this deinterline is that it adds service to the 63rd Street Tunnel in case it ever grows. But there are drawbacks. The overall impact of this deinterline is almost the same as the F&M swap, where the western section of QBL will be mildly inconvenienced, the middle section of QBL won't be affected, and the eastern section of QBL will see a benefit. But there is a major difference, a connection to east side services. Going back to the map, Midtown East is a crucial destination. Lexington Avenue 53rd Street does offer a transfer to the 6, but everyone knows that that involves a convoluted and overcrowded transfer. But the R train offers a connection at Lexington Avenue 59th Street for a way easier transfer to the 4, 5, and 6 trains. Therefore, the R's sole purpose on QBL is low distribution, as the R pretty much serves as a redundant service to the 6th Avenue line. Now, when you get rid of the 11th Street cut, 
This means that Lexington Avenue, 51st Street, will be even more crowded. But at the same time, the N train will offer a one-seat express ride to Union Square, which is a top destination. So there's that mitigating factor. But there's no denying that Lexington 51st will be even more crowded. And expansion of the station is going to be much harder because this is in dense midtown Manhattan. Because of this, I am putting this the intro line at a 90 out of 100. It is still very good, as it gets rid of multiple merging conflicts, but that overcrowding at an already overcrowded station will dock some points. Up to this point, we have only talked about partial deinterlining, but let's switch gears and talk about complete deinterlining. The third deinterlining project is to assign QBL Express service as 8th Avenue only, and to assign QBL local service as 6th Avenue only. This means the E and K are on the express, and the F and M are on the local. The R gets rerouted to Astoria. This completely eliminates the merge at not only Queens Plaza, but also 5th Avenue, 53rd Street, and 42nd Street. And with CBTC being installed, this means capacity can be upgraded to 36 trains per hour. That is an insane output, which is definitely needed on QBL. However, that will create some problems. The western zone of QBL will be moderately affected. People who want a one-seat ride to 6th Avenue and Broadway will still retain them. But people who want access to the 53rd Street Tunnel will need to transfer at Queens Plaza. The middle zone of QBL is going to be tricky. On the one hand, people do like their express, meaning that there will be transfers made to the E and K from the F and M at Roosevelt Avenue. However, given that the F and M is where riders want to go, and that riders are going to have to transfer again to the F and M, will riders do that? I don't know. Therefore, I will say moderately affected. Finally, the eastern zone of QBO will be moderately to severely affected. People who want service to 53rd Street will still get that one seat ride, but people who want 6th Avenue service will need to transfer at Queens Plaza. Queens Plaza Station will be the new Roosevelt Avenue under this scenario. With 49 million annual riders in the eastern zone of QBL, plus 17 million annual riders in the western zone, excluding 21st Street and Court Square, that is potentially 66 million annual commuters transferring here. That is much higher than the deinterline 149th Street Grand Concourse at 45 million, the current Roosevelt Avenue at 50 to 55 million, and the current 96th Street on the 7th Avenue line at about 54 million. Now, 66 million is not the true number as not everyone is going to transfer at Queens Plaza. But the same principle applies for literally every deinterlining and transfer point. So I am still going to use that number for clarity reasons. So to make this work, not only an infill station at Northern Boulevard and 41st Avenue is necessary for a connection to Queens Plaza, but 36th Street would need to be converted to an express station to spread the load. Now, there is a mixed reaction to this, with some saying that it is unfeasible thanks to new housing projects, while others saying that there can be a workaround. So, if it is feasible to convert 36th Street, I'll support it. But whatever is the case, this deinterlining project is one of the hardest in the entire system. Given the moderate to severe disruption in one seat rides and connections, combined with the literal extreme overcrowding at Queens Plaza, I am going to give this deinterlining a 50 out of 100, meaning I am on the fence. It all boils down to whether 36th Street can be converted. If yes, I'll support the interlining here, albeit just barely. If not, then I am going to suggest that we wait until the 2nd Avenue subway gets a branch to Queens to help distribute the loads and expand 1C ride options. The final deinterline I am going to talk about is the same principle as a third, but different execution. It is assigning express services to 6th Avenue only, and local services to 8th Avenue. This means the F and M are now on the express, and the E and K are on the local. This does solve the preference of 6th Avenue, as that is where people are going, but that still is going to create problems. The western zone of QBL will be moderately affected. They are more likely going to transfer at Queens Plaza for the F and M, as that is their top destination, though connections to the Lexington service will be the same, the E and K via 53rd. The middle zone of QBL is going to be moderately to severely affected. Now, riders will have even more of a reason to transfer at Roosevelt Avenue, as 6th Avenue is the area they are heading to. This will further hold up trains even more, though converting Woodhaven Boulevard to an express station will help spread the load. Finally, the eastern zone of QBL is going to be moderately affected, 
Riders who want 6th Avenue services now have a one-seat ride, but people who want Lexington services, which is a priority, will have no way to connect to them. Yes, there is an out-of-system transfer at Lexington and 63rd, but everyone knows that is a joke. Given all of this, I am going to give this a 48 out of 100. This will run into the same problems as the previous deinterlining scenario, but this time, the Express will have no way of connecting to Lexington. Even though 6th Avenue is the preferred destination, 8th Avenue is still within walking distance of 7th Avenue, another preferred destination, and can still connect to 6th Avenue services at 7th Avenue, 53rd Street. Therefore, if I was to do a complete deinterline, 8th Avenue Express on QBL would be my pick. So, what is the takeaway from all of this? Because of how complex QBL is, a partial deinterline akin to an f and swap would work much better, and be way more beneficial to not only a complete deinterline, but also present day service patterns. That is why we are launching this initiative, to swap the f and trains. It will speed up trips, give even more 1C rides, especially on QBL East, and reduce overcrowding on QBL and stations along 53rd Street. Since the MTA is likely going to make a decision on whether to keep the F on 53rd Street or not, let's sway them towards a more positive stance on deinterlining. If you support this, please sign on, as every signature counts. Anyway, this marks the end of this video. What are your thoughts? Tell us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.